Hello and welcome to the 33rd ever episode of the Ice Coffee Hour. I'm Elena and as of today, the podcast has made $30,000 and 80, 30,000, 86 dollars. Great. We're going to keep good. it. Right. This, is great. Why? this is a great job. Thank you so much Good for coming job. Yeah, on thank the you. podcast. This All is... the way from New York. Yeah. This is true. This just is, for this. Just you for flew this. out just yeah. for this. Yeah. We feel honored. Yes. Thank you. No, thank no, you so much. Yeah. yeah. Especially after my video on you. I know. You know, you were nicer than I expected. Really? So, yes. Wow. I went in. I was a little nervous. But. <laughs> now, to bring everyone up to speed on, on what's happened here, some background, uh, you were on a CNBC video. Correct. Called, what was it? In Unlocked. Unlocked. And this is one of the first unlocks that they have done. Yeah, right. it was the first. Was it the yeah, first? Yeah, it was the first. The start of a great series. Yeah. yeah, so you were on an episode by CNBC, which of course, I watched them all, and then of right. course, I react to them, and you were one of the episodes I reacted to. Correct. And people were giving you a really tough time in the comments about where you live and how much you spend in rent, and funny thing, I've actually seen your channel before, I don't know how. I, I see basically every YouTube channel I I mean, out there. Yeah, I kind of feel like at right. this point you get to know everybody. Yeah. So I saw your channel before, recognized you from that, watched your episode, had some critiques, mm -hmm, overall mm -hmm. some good things to say. But uh, let's go back before we do the confronting series. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You, you do yeah, YouTube. I do. Yeah. Yes. I'm a YouTuber as well, content creator. I would say I primarily create content on lifestyle so it was primarily travel for a while and obviously you know things have changed and that was kind of like the trajectory i was supposed to go on into 2019 and so yeah i kind of had to reevaluate so this past year i've been making a lot of content specifically on new york city a lot of apartment content been delving into the world of finance as well mm. which has been fun and then just other like fashion sustainable fashion uh beauty a little bit of everything, yeah. And yeah. how long have you been making videos on YouTube? It's been a minute. So I technically started my channel in 20, what is it now? I guess 2015. But wow. I would say it was like 2017 was when I really like committed to it and started making yeah. it a lot more Did you go to college or when yeah. you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to school in San Diego and yeah, graduated in 2018 and then moved okay. to New York. And, and why YouTube? Oh, yeah, good question. I guess for me, my story would be that I... I watched YouTube a lot. I loved YouTube in high school, like that, like 2013, 2014 YouTube personality. I was mm -hmm. always a fan. And growing up as like a teenager, preteen, I loved making videos. So I was already editing a lot. I was already used to like, you know, holding the camera, editing the whole process. And then eventually I just kind of decided to stick to it as like a creative outlet and yeah, kept it up. And how long yeah. do you think that you were on YouTube until you considered it to be like self-sustaining and yeah. sufficient? Mm -hmm. A while. Yeah. I never had a viral video. Never just like never just fully picked up. I remember when my channel was smaller at about like 50,000, I had a, uh, a YouTuber friend who was further along and she told me that when you hit 100K is when you can like pretty much go full time. And so it was like the day after I graduated college, I hit 100,000 subscribers. Wow. I was like, all right, gotta, gotta go for it. And so, yeah, I'd say around yeah. then. Was the YouTuber friend Shelby? Can we say? No. Do we tell you? Yeah, it's yeah. us. Yeah. Allegra Shaw, which I don't know if you know who know that, who that is. is. Yeah, it no. was like a Glossier event. So I glossier. dabble in that yeah. beauty world of YouTube as well. So I don't know what that is. What's Glossier? It is a uh, basically like a beauty skincare brand. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. And how much money were you making back then? A hundred thousand, like Can fifty thousand, a hundred. Are you okay yeah. disclosing? Oh numbers? yeah, yeah. Do I'll we'll disclose some numbers. Yeah. I never have, so we'll, Good, okay. it'll be a little, a little juicy. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Here's the, we have the T, as, as they say. So I would say that first. <laughs> okay. I would say like in 2018, so my first year full time. So I graduated in May 2018. Uh, I spent the summer traveling and then I moved to New York in September. And so by the end of 2018, I think I made 50,000. So I wasn't making big bucks. 50K. 50K. And that was at 100,000 subscribers? And my channel did grow quite a bit that year. So I probably, okay. I graduated in May with probably 100,000 and then I would say I hit like 250,000 by the end of the year. So there was a big growth spurt. That was the one time mm. I had like a big growth spurt, I'd say. Now the 50,000, is that mostly AdSense or is it sponsorships or what it's was it? mostly sponsorships. Really? I've never made a lot of AdSense money. Really? Why is, that, is your CPM just lower? It's so low. It's so low. It's insane in comparison to- How low? Like four or five dollars. Wow. CPM or RPM? RPM. RPM. I get the next all time. I can show you guys. RPM's your revenue. Videos. I can pull up numbers. I'm not going to the top of my head, but do you want to pull, you wanna pull it up? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. This is a finance channel. We're going to dive. We're going to dive into All this. All right. Let's do let's it. Let's see. Cool. Come on, 
Also, this is obligatory, truth. but are you yes. comfortable screenshotting so I can have visual? I can screenshot. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, let's pull the video cool. as an example. See, look. <laughs> No. Can you, can you yeah, that? Yeah. no way. Okay, so let, so it's what is this? This is college room tour. How to style a small room uh, in the last well, okay, eleven hundred views, five dollars and twenty one. But that's also the amount of money you've made in the last twenty eight days. Yeah. Let's so see if, you if go I go to, like, all time. Yeah. Two thousand dollars. And how many views did it get? Yeah. Eight hundred thousand. Yeah. So we would yeah. be eight hundred thousand. What is what is that like? Eleven, twelve, thirteen thousand yeah. dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll give That's got to be tough. I'm, it, th no, I think yeah. I think you're underpaid. No, I mean, you got to think sponsorships. Sponsorships. Well. Yeah. That's the thing is like I have to do a lot more sponsorships than some YouTubers. And sometimes people are annoyed. They're like, "Why are you doing so many sponsorships in comparison to um, other YouTubers?" But like this year on AdSense, I made like thirty four thousand dollars for the year, and I had like twelve wow. million views or something like that. So. If you're in the lifestyle sphere, there's not a lot of money in AdSense. It's that not really livable. But you also yeah. can market, you would market your Instagram account. I've oh yeah, that. I market I market that for sure, yes. Why, so. is business going down on Instagram? No, but I think there's a lot more Instagram deals in the beauty fashion I see. realm. So there's definitely sponsorship money there, but there's not AdSense Okay, money there, let I me realized. ask you this. Yeah. Uh, are you putting mid-roll ads in your videos? I usually do, if it's a 12 minute video, I'll usually do like the, click the before and after, okay. and then I'll usually do two. So I'll do one at like the three minute mark, one at like the nine minute mark. Okay. Yeah. All right, well that's good. I was, yeah. that's fair, yeah. that's fair, okay. Yeah. Wow, okay, I, I expected much more, especially you walk in with the new iPhone, living in New yeah, York. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like, I expected way more ad revenue than that. Not quite, not okay. quite. But the sponsorships do, do help, so. Yeah. Got it, yeah. okay. So you living in New York now. Yes. That was what the episode was about. You had two roommates, right? So uh -huh. the total rent was 5,400 a month. Correct. Split yes. that between three people total. Mm -hmm. So your portion is not that bad. You lived in a nice place. Yeah, not bad at all. Good decorating. How did Thank you. CNBC reach out to you from that? Or you, you reached know, to them? Yeah, they reached out to me and I think they found me through YouTube okay. because I've done quite a few apartment tour decor videos. And so, I, yeah, I think they just found me through that. Okay. Yeah. What was it like reading some of those comments on that video saying that New York is so expensive that you were wasting money living yeah, there? They were telling they were telling you you are making a big mistake. I know. Well, I I was expecting it because I watch. So Refinery Twenty Nine has a similar series. It's like yep. apartment tour. And if you look at the comments, it's exactly the same. So I knew I was getting myself into. Like I knew people would not be kind or even understanding but like i'm obsessed with street easy which for those who are unfamiliar it's like the new york apartment hunting app essentially i'm obsessed it's literally part of my morning routine i check it every day for months so i'm very aware of what's a good deal or not i'd say like for specifically what i'm looking for in mm. my budget amount of rooms so i feel like what i've got was a good deal but people are always going to be like why are you spending that much you could be living in Pennsylvania and like get, you know, so much more right. bang for your buck or like even living in different parts of the city because I was living in a pretty like prime neighborhood, you could say. Um, so, yeah. I do more. remember yeah. you saying that it's wise for you to live in New York mm -hmm. and especially in that area because there are so many content opportunities. Totally. And that does make sense when you put it like that because yeah. then it's just like a business expense yeah. how you're living there. Exactly. Yeah. That was my, uh, I, I came to the defense. Yes, of you. you and did. I said Thank it you. makes sense yeah. for what you're spending. It's not that bad. No. Yeah, exactly. But, I figured you'd understand. But I did tell you that you shouldn't be living there full time yes. and that ideally you got to be traveling more. I think if you did van life, I think that was my you that was my recommendation. I think I I'd say that to everybody like if <laughs> if they just did van life, they would well, do van so life well. Does so well on YouTube. I know. That's what's crazy. Are you thinking about doing it? I did do it actually. You did. I know. So you kind of hit it on the nose. Wow. I actually, did I miss these? I, I missed. Know. I missed it. I doubt. Usually I research this, but this okay. Past summer, okay. so I lived in a van for a bit, and I loved it. How was and that? I'd love to do it again. Oh my gosh, it was great. Was that by yourself, or did you do that? Me with? and my boyfriend. We okay. went on a long trip. Cool. Yeah, rented a van, and it was great. Wow. Yeah. And normally Where did I would you go? be traveling too, as well. That was my yeah. kind of focus of my channel, but. Where yes, did you go? Here we are. Um, I went up the coast. So up through, so I'm, yeah, again, originally from Orange County. So I was staying with my parents at the time and went up through OC, LA, up through Big Sur, San Francisco, mm. Mendocino, and then all the way to the lost coast of California. How long did you go for? Uh, probably like a week and a half. So it was a dabble. It yeah. wasn't like, I would never claim to be a van lifer. That's not Grant quite. wants to do it for like I know. years. You got to okay, do it for fair. like a yes. year. Oh my yeah. gosh. Because I, I've, so I've done that drive before up to San Francisco. Yeah. And it's a it's a nice drive. You could do that in a day. Well, that's the so, easy part. But yeah, 
the northern part of California is a lot larger than I expected. Re- I guess, you know, on the yeah, hours in the van. It keeps going. Yeah. And okay. there's lots of little nooks and crannies to explore. But no, I would yeah. by no means call myself a... What you need to do is do it from L.A. to New York. I like, thought yes. about instead that. Of, right? Instead of taking a flight back... I'm- not get a most. van. I'm into it. Four or five grand. Deck it out. Do something crazy yeah. in it, and then travel, and then do podcasts okay. on the way up there. That's that's yes. what I would do. Yeah, honestly, I honestly have thought about that. It'd yeah. be great travel content too. I, I would do that. That's smart. That. A podcast would be cool, and you just yeah. talk about the different places you Th- know. That's what I've thought. I've been telling Jack. I mean, I think at, at some point I really want to do the whole van life. <laughs> <laughs> <Why are> you <laughs> you, you want to recruit me to like sleep in the back where you, while you travel with Macy, and I'm just like <laughs> there. Just, like, okay, you're just like constantly a third wheel, like attached. Literally, to that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm literally a hundred percent just twenty four seven at third. So wheel. I thought this. I thought we could get like a giant RV. You got like not not quite a van, but like an RV with a trailer in the back and Jack would be in the trailer <laughs> filming. on the back. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. So that way Jack would have his own go. spot. But yes. what we would do is just go from like every state, like all 50 states, visit them maybe to do like a bit of a travel, yeah. not, a, not a vlog, but like a little travel segment yeah. or something and then do podcasts like at every state, every location. Mm-hmm. That way Jack's in his own space <laughs> film it all. I think it'd be such a cool opportunity. I think it'd be great. RVs yeah. are the way to go. Yeah. That's what I figured out. Vans are nice, especially if they're decked out. Yeah. But an RV, you could go months and not miss anything. Like, that's, set. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think at I'm some point, I'd like to do that. Jack thinks he's going to be third wheeling. We're not that bad. Nah. <laughs> just bring It'll a, be good. It'll be nice. Bring the puppy. Yeah. We'll just bring <laughs> Bailey. Yeah. So anyway, I think that was my only complaint to you, was it? Yes. Was it? What was it like watching my reaction to you? It was pretty funny. I'm sure everyone always says this, but I had, of course, seen all your videos. Okay. I loved your millennial money reaction. So I was used mm, to you yeah. reacting to those and kind of knowing that, you know, you don't play it too uh, <laughs> careful. And so I was like, oh gosh, what am I getting myself into? Um, but I was I was pleasantly surprised that you could fully come for me. And I was glad that you understood, obviously, unsurprisingly, the New York City I get real it. estate market. Yes. Um, which I knew commenters would not. So right. I was like, phew. <laughs> Did you know he was going to react to you? No. You I must didn't. Have. I actually didn't cross my mind. I think because it was a new series. You think I would skip a new I know, series? Honestly, yeah, <laughs> no, I know. I don't that. know why I would have expected that, <laughs> yeah. but no, I wasn't. Oh, it's a new real estate series. You weren't expecting Graham is going to skip I, that. Actually, for some reason, I really wasn't. Like, when you DM'd me, <laughs> yeah. I, like, yelled to my boyfriend. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I wasn't expecting this. Like, wow. Yeah, Were there any so. comments talking about Graham reacting. Oh yeah, anything. for sure. And then so when once you I saw started, those, yeah, like, then I was okay, like, oh yeah, this gonna... is probably gonna come. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Did did any of my army come to your channel? Did this happen? A I bit, think it must a bit. have. There okay. was a little crossover because then right. I re- reacted. Yeah, I to saw you that. Rea- you know, yeah. we're just creating a YouTube loop here. Of, right. Uh, you know, add some oh, money. <laughs> and then and then the next one that people have been doing what it was like to go on yeah. the nice coffee hour. Chandler just did that. Chandler did that. Taylor did that. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. <laughs> what it was really like and that's just like the nicest stuff ever but you, maybe yeah. you could clickbait in the beginning there we go i love it so, i know because i feel yeah. like we're in semi we're in pretty different spheres in youtube so yeah totally oh you know what that over. that battery died give me a sec i got another yeah no i'm always paranoid that uh something is not going to record i've had so it happen scary. uh three times i think where i've panicked uh one when i flew to florida and filmed with uh ben mala mm-hmm. the entire trip was just like one day with ben mala for like seven hours that was it his audio or no it was my audio in the interview did not record anything at all and oh. i figured it out when i left it was done we missed the perfect moment so if you see that video the sit down portion of him talking is only him talking and basically my portions just don't exist because there's no audio to that. The other one, when I flew to Detroit to meet with Alex Pardo, Millennial Money, uh, the entire first segment of our audio did not get recorded. I think something was turned off or something happened, but I flew to Detroit to meet with this guy, yeah. nothing recorded, figured it out at like 7 p.m. that night. We were supposed to fly out the next day mm-hmm. and I called him up and it was so embarrassing. Like, hey man, nothing recorded can we do it again and he went back to his shop opened up we filmed the whole thing again and then there was uh, there was another time i was just thinking about that just nothing recorded bad man oh yeah one of the angles was blurry Mm -hmm. the entire time and then the other one got deleted we deleted footage oh Oh, yeah i've done that i've been there you know what i've noticed it's always on the trips where we travel 
Yeah, it's, it's the never, most important one. Yeah, yeah, the most important, the clip. highest risk one. Yeah. yeah, on the biggest videos when we travel is Not is usually good. when it doesn't record. But this time, I think we should be okay. Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah, perfect. But um, you yeah. also, yes, please try it. Let us know what you think. Uh, okay, so this is my twenty cent iced coffee. I think I made yours a little bit stronger than normal. Oh, no, I like it. Do you actually? Yeah, great I can make it sweeter. This is great. I like. Okay. It. I like small okay. sips, but not too much. Are you just saying that? No, I tell you. Really? Okay, no. you're not lying. I don't, I'm okay. not lying. <laughs> okay. You're lying here. All right, the only reason I say that is because I made yours stronger than... Usually I put more cream in it. I feel um, like it's safer to go stronger than too sweet. If you're offering somebody coffee, right? Usually people like the really sweet one. Usually I make it where it's like But it's also kind of weird there. when you hand someone a coffee that's just like, it's like drowned yeah, yeah, it's in... Yeah. Like it's all white. I like, hate, is this milk? I um, hate that. It's I, a worse it, yeah. look yeah, 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 when yeah. you drown it. No, this is great. Yeah, where it's more just like a like a liquidy cream yeah, with like yeah. a little bit of coffee <laughs> yeah, in it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, this is how I like it. All right, so yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Well, well, you yeah. also just dropped a bomb on us before this, and you said that you're moving. Yes. No, wow. No. So Where? you're moving out of the apartment, which I your am. rent was like 1800 a month, Correct. right? Yes. Are you upgrading or downgrading? I am upgrading a little bit because, okay. so I'm staying in New York, so not too much drama there, not going too yeah. far. Um, but yeah, I mean, the deals, the real estate market right now, especially in New York, obviously so many people have left, are pretty good. So I figured get a little more bang for my buck. And since I have done better this year and I'm obviously saving money on travel and I used to pay for cargo space and all this other stuff, like I'd rather invest a few or, or not invest, but you know, mm, I know people okay. gotta use that word carefully. <laughs> lifestyle inflation, you know, that's the comments are gonna, gonna attack my, you. My yeah. value of life a, a bit more if I'm gonna be inside way more than a year's past. So, yeah, new apartment. Why not just move somewhere else? Why not do I the know. whole van life thing? Why not do that I'm again? Because that would it. reinvigorate. I mean, that would really just cause every the algorithm loves that. You know, I am considering it for the summer. The hard part is my lease is up in February, where it's like, what do you do in February? So stay tuned for the summer content. Maybe did you a little van life break. Did you already sign something? Not yet. I'm it's looking not actively. Late. I know, I know. If oh, I so were you, you. found a place. Not yet. If I were you, yeah. ditch the lease in New York. What I do Come back here. Stuff? I know. It's tempting. Storage. It's tempting. Put in storage. This is true. Live with your parents. Live with your parents. Oh, I already did that. Years. I already did yeah. that. Just for a few okay. years. Live with your parents. <laughs> Just for a few years. Oh gosh. Invest perfect. everything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, <one huge> RV. <laughs> it's perfect. Get an RV, park yes. it in their driveway. Mm, yeah. Nice live in there. there. Yeah. Take an extension cord from inside, <laughs> plug it Steal in. Your <laughs> garage. No, no. That's the way to go. In all in all seriousness, my uns uh, my unsolicited advice. I'll take it. I'll take okay. It. Ditch the lease. Then get the get the van. <laughs> uh start in California and just Me travel too. for like three to four or five months. See how your channel is doing. And then reevaluate after about six months. Yeah, I know it'd be so good for the channel. Yeah. Would you like, feel inspired it. though? Because I also think that's pretty important. Would you yeah. be as inspired in a van traveling across the United States as you do in New oh, York certainly. in the nice oh, yeah. place? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a lot Something of like the travel so. content I do would be more not like roughing <clears> it, but it's never like I was not luxury travel. I was like hostel travel. So I'm all for backpacking it and figuring it out. I so would, I feel like yeah. van life would be the equivalent. I would do that because I think for 10 grand, you get a nice enough van. Mm -hmm. You can finance it right off the interest mm -hmm. and then travel to all of these places that are just not crowded right now. I agree. I'm into There's it. There's not a lot of people travel. I think you would be safe doing that, yeah. going to a lot of remote areas. It's probably true. safer for you to do that in a van on your own That's true. than in New York City. You could try new spots. Mm -hmm. You could try like the worst rated restaurants in certain areas or the best restaurants of whatever. Uh, shopping. These are great ideas. You could do shopping there, lifestyle content, yeah. travel, uh, just your experiences. Would you, I, I, I think all of that would, would do really well. I oh, think you would. could double your income this year if you just did that. Okay, would you do it? I think I'm sold. Really? Would you actually Honestly, do it? Honestly, stay tuned. This summer, really? I've been in the like. Not this works. summer now. Like it's cold. Now. <laughs> it's not cold. No, no, no. your life. It's it's not. It's not that cold. First of all, the West Coast is not that bad. No, it's totally so, fine here. So you could, by the time you get to the, I just you know, slowly the, the, make my way back yeah. to the East Coast. Right. So that, well, that's what that's I'm what not, I'm thinking. I'm you go up and down like uh, like like this. Yeah. You know, throughout the it. entire country, and I think you would do really well. All right, sold. Do it. Gotta get a car. You know, you know, I'll tell my boyfriend, yeah. I'll be like, see you in four months. Would you, would you travel alone or would you travel with him? Uh, or would you travel I would do with either. a friend? I've done quite yeah. a bit of solo travel, so I'm all for that as well. He has a more strict job, so I don't know if the flexibility okay. what is, is there is. What does he do? Uh, he's a cartographer, so he works in like data mapping sales. I thought you said car photographer. No, I know. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> really cool. Wow. The cartographer's no, been too. He's a big map nerd. I'm just wondering, okay. what yeah. do we have left to map? Because I feel like we've been around for so long. You're not wrong in that regard. We're really like... 
I don't know, pulling strings here, like trying it's to find stuff to match. It's more about pulling in, uh, so, like the information of like where different businesses are in developing countries. So if you go to oh. Mexico, you can't necessarily always pull up your phone and be like, "Give me the nearest Seven Eleven." Some of that information doesn't exist yet, and people are currently mm. working it out. So that makes sense. Yeah. I also yeah. want to know, like, we always give unsolicited advice to our guests. Yes. Can we get some unsolicited, or actually Ooh, solicited now, okay. advice from you? And it just on anything. On anything. anything. Yeah. Ooh, okay, or are we messing fun. up? Take, yeah. Take your time as well. I can okay. cut out any dead silence. Take your time. Yeah. Okay. Think it through. Ramsey does that when he wants the uh, the door opened. Yeah. He wants to go outside. He, no, he doesn't. He doesn't go outside. He, he just likes. Wants it open. He looks outside. <laughs> And I remember like, nah, someone told me or I read somewhere that like cats looking out a window is the equivalent to a human watching TV. And it makes sense. Wow. You said that so many times to me now. Really? It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's I've profound. Never heard that. It's profound. I'm it makes it, it, it changed my life that much because now it's like when he stares at there at, for hours like, at nothing, oh. I'm like, it's like, it's like me watching <laughs> Dr. Phil or something. I love so. it. All right. My advice, I'm just going to go with what comes first. Go. I would say dive more into the lifestyle category. Mm. I feel like you've got finance covered. You've got, you know, real estate, all of that covered. Maybe, maybe try a little lifestyle. Maybe throw a little, Do you think that we have log. an angle on that though? You never know. If I think especially when people, when you have an audience that gets to a point where they really will watch pretty much anything they that you put out or mm -hmm. they really like you as a personality, they enjoy lifestyle content. Have you done any vlogs? Have I, I missed them? Hi, really? yeah, the vlogs do the worst on my channel. Like of everything I've ever done, I've done like two or three vlogs, I think, ever. And they all do like well, 10 out of 10. You gotta like- And then I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And vlogs take me a long time to I film. Know, and because edit. it's an entire day. It's not like I could just plan yeah. something out five this hours, film it, edit it. Whole day of, of just filming. Then I gotta make it exciting. Yeah. And my day's not exciting. Like I have really had to go <laughs> yeah. out of my way to do something that's, that's like noteworthy. The I finance community is like, they're fanatical about yeah. finance. Yeah. They're like, don't stray. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, well, people criticize the way I used to eat like a lot of frozen foods because it, oh, it was no. cheap. So like the healthy oh, choice, so two dollars and seventy nine cents. They said that was bad for All me. All right, so maybe they're a little so, too, a little too. Grim got touch. bullied out of the lifestyle fair, community. Fair. <laughs> I have noticed though, just as a thought, that it took me. There was almost like a, I don't know, learning curve is the closest equivalent I can think of, but like a learning curve, almost a watch curve, essentially. That the beginning, I'd put out a lot of vlogs, travel videos, and for a while they didn't perform well, but I just stuck to it, and at a point they became my most watched videos because hmm. I think people just had to kind of get used to seeing that on my channel. So. Okay. Just put that out there. So what else besides that? So do lifestyle stuff. Lifestyle. Frugal living. Okay. I okay. got to think on this. What do you think about the Sta family? The Sta family. Is that, uh, your, is that your audience? Uh, is that no. your family? No, we've, we've like, joked about that becoming like the next vlog, the Sta family. Yeah. Oh my uh, God, it's like, like me, Bailey, Ramsey, uh, Wait, Macy, you know, Jack. You know, family vlogs do well. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Not really like no no children, but we you know the the two animals and Jack. Yeah. And Jack. Basically just like yeah. work twenty four seven. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And I know. Sushi. Vlogs this year are really hard to make interesting. People are like, We want vlogs inside. I'm like, do you really oh, yeah. know? There's not a lot happening. Like it's one thing when you're running around New York or traveling. Yeah. So Bailey's done with her bone. Uh I don't know if you wanna just okay. <laughs> hold I don't know if you wanna hold her. You just got to be careful for the wire, but if if she so might calm I'll down, just the audio level. Just, okay, so it should be okay. Nuzzles. She might just calm down. Oh man, it's a problem with having animals. <laughs> you know what? I realized fish it's don't like do zoo. this. This is why. Yeah. This is why I love fish, uh, because they don't they don't do any of this stuff. Bailey, please stop. 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 Okay. Um, so, what other unsolicited advice? All right, let me can think give on us? this. Yeah. I just want to show we have Bailey right there and Ramsey clawing at the window. True, true farm. Bailey? It's like a zoo. She, she's got to learn to not to jump on the table. She sees <laughs> Ramsey doing it, and she's like, hey, Ram if the cat could do it, so could I. Damn, I don't know. I feel like you got your corner figured out on the internet. So everything else is it. perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you're flawless. It's human being. I know, I know. Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm bringing a little lifestyle to your, the lifestyle YouTube category to your yeah. channel. Well, let's talk more about your own personal finances. Can, right. we, can we talk about let's that? Let's do it. Okay. Your outfit looks yeah. expensive. It's it's not. It's not Is it not? Bad. Does it look I expensive, Graham? Take that. I don't. I don't know. I'm so bad with this sort of stuff because sometimes you could get stuff at like. I'm not. I'm not saying you got it at Goodwill, but sometimes you, know? you could say like outfits like that. You could get a good. No, that's fair. Like, and a, no, that's not, I'm not offended because of the. I, I didn't actually, need that to be not at all. Rude or you get, if you go back on my yeah. channel, a lot of my first videos were thrifting videos. Yeah, so yeah, you see, were perfectly there we fine. Go. There yeah, we go. Okay. It ends up. 
Okay, but how much was it? How much was um? The... So I thrifted the pants for about fifteen dollars. So See, you're not wrong. Yeah, and the there top we go. Is probably like one hundred and twenty, but it was wow. gifted. So that's the perk of working as a wow fashion content creator. Is you get some free wardrobe yeah. items. Yeah. How much free stuff do you usually get? If I'm being honest, <laughs> that's the reason why Grandma got the lifestyle. So did yeah. you bring me some products? Um, did you? I would have. Oh. I know, and I have extra. Of, of what, like hats? Oh. Just, no, <laughs> like, that's a very fair sure. question. Yeah. See, that's a, it's interesting how different our YouTube yeah. spheres are. Yeah, we uh, were gifted <laughs> hats and hoodies by Chandler. So, like, that's our level of like free skincare. stuff. Skincare. I can usually load you up on skincare, Macy beauty can have products, right. some clothing. Okay. Got you covered. Thanks. Um, but yeah, I'd say the beauty fashion world, there is a, a bit, probably a, a, like a little too much gifting. It's not quite, it's not very mm. sustainable. But okay. my friends love me because when they come over, it's like a free store of wow. products to choose from. So, okay. Yeah. And how is how has your business been this last year? Yeah, definitely. It's been interesting. It's taken a lot of uh, reevaluating because like I've mentioned multiple times, like I was ready to travel this whole year, kind of go that travel focused route. Yeah. And so have clearly had to pivot a bunch. So I've been focusing a bit more on like New York City content. So I've mm -hmm. been milking that a lot. So overall, I did end up making more than I did the year before. Mm -hmm. And I think because people were obviously a bit bored, they were uh, yes. a little bit more engaged with social media. So I, yeah, yeah. definitely benefit off that a bit. That was one of the things that was huge for me back in, I remember back in March, everything dropped by yes. like 50% overnight. I actually got kind of worried because I'm like, I can't yeah. talk about the stock, like how to invest your money. Because if, if the market's going down 10%, it's like I make a video, the market goes down 10%. Right. I look like stupid in yeah. the short term. Right. Um, and I was really, <laughs> really, stop it. I was really worried because everything dropped 50%. Yeah. Um, I, I think there was like a sponsor or two that were like, we can't, we don't want to commit to, <laughs> of course, we don't want to commit to anything now. Um, but then almost as quickly as things went down, they just doubled. I mean, they, yeah. everything just went nuts. Um, and thankfully the, the channel ended up doing really well last year. Same for you. But yeah. Like numbers wise too, it just took off. Yeah. I mean, I've seen um, it grow, obviously. I would but. say ad rates overall have stayed the same, okay. but views went up. Yes. I think more people paid attention to personal finance yeah, during a time like definitely. Every, everyone was watching the market. And so like <clears throat> ad rates working full -time down, mm -hmm. views went up mm. and that balanced it out. <laughs> 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 yeah, it goes all Yeah, I can pump up more yeah. content, definitely. More time so, on your hands. How many income streams would you say you have right now? I would say, okay, let's see. So... If I counted them separately, you could say Instagram sponsorships, YouTube sponsorships, YouTube AdSense. I sell photo presets, which isn't a lot, but it's What's a little a extra. Preset? So it is essentially like a LUT, you know, on so I guess no. for someone who doesn't know, it's like a it's like a photo filter that I've created essentially. And then you can go into Lightroom and you can use it. It's a popular thing amongst like photo like is that what Bryant uh, does? Yes, okay. exactly. Uh, so it's people who okay. like, yeah, are more into the photography realm or even like the artistic side of videos. So like a LUT is what you'll use. You'll kind of like smack it on a video and it'll make it look pretty essentially. So cool. photo presets, um, affiliate links. So like Epidemic Sound, Reward Style is a big fashion one. Uh, Amazon, things in that category. And then I'm finally working on merchandise. I'm a little late to the ball game on that, but that hasn't. Yeah, come I'm out yet, so that's surprised soon, but. Uh, if you're in fashion, you haven't done a, a merch line or something I've like that I've been very yet. picky about it. I <clears> wanted <throat> to wait until it felt just right. So. Okay. Yeah, it took or me makeup. A makeup is oh. There's a lot of money makeup. There's yeah. so much money Have you thought about that? I well, I don't really do a lot of makeup. Makeup is okay. like its, its own kind of scary sphere. It's very intense in the beauty world, but there is definitely a lot of money. To be made. I feel yeah. like people would rather makeup from a small creator with no drama. Agreed. Just like just Agreed. nothing to it. Just yeah. st good makeup at a good price. I'll have to pitch this to my manager. I'll be like, all right, yeah. let's get Oh, you have going. a manager. I do. How does, yes. how does that work? Why, why do you have a manager? Do you not have a manager? No. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Well, I also, when I started, I was like, when I started making money off of it, I was like mm -hmm. 19, 20. Yeah. And I was in school and um, it kind of just helped me be able to like negotiate contracts. So I'm technically, I'm signed to Digital Brand Architects, which is like a digital talent agency. And technically, I have a manager who manages probably similar contracts, helps negotiate brand deals, um, will connect me with a lot of like um, on the ground brands within New York City, help create merch lines, stuff like that. So, hmm. are you comfortable sharing how much you made last year? You don't have to say. You don't, you don't have to say. How, I could tell you my average rates. 
your average rates for like integrations? Yeah. Are you able to say that? Oh, I don't. It's oh, funny no. enough, like of all the things, yeah, I, that's that's the one thing I usually that don't, don't say share. that. That's the oh. one thing I do because then it gives away the competitive advantage because one sponsor might be true. like, ooh, they're paying way less. I could get away with paying less. Okay. So that's the one thing. I group them all together. I'm like, last year I made X amount from sponsorships, but yeah. I never say how much individually because when you try to negotiate them, they'll use that against you. Okay. It's a bargaining tool. It is. Oh, no. This so of all good. the things we just saved you like, on that, don't do yeah, it. don't do it. Yeah, um, pre-tax or post-tax? I would say pre-tax. Pre-ta- pre-tax? pre-tax, yeah. <laughs> do you know what, <laughs> what to is say? Your pre- I don't know. I'm like debating in my head right now. Think you can ballpark it. it. You can. Okay. So it doesn't if need to be exact. Okay. If you if you want if you want to, really if you want to. I'll, I'll, I'll make a large ballpark. I'll say it's between like it's probably less than you'd expect because of ad rates because I have like half a million subscribers. Yeah. So uh, I'll say it was in between. 130,000 to 200,000. Okay. 220,000. That's a, that's exactly about where I thought it would be. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Phew. Yeah, no, I was going to say 200. 200 250 is where I would say. Okay. But I also didn't realize the ad rates were l- way lower than I would have expected. Yes, they yeah. exactly. It's like I'll pump out yeah. a ton of content and I'm not making any ad money. Yeah. 1800 yeah. on rent makes sense if you're making that much. Totally. Money. Yeah. Oh, that, that's not yeah. bad at all. No. Honestly, if what you're spending is not bad. Okay. But <laughs> what about what you're investing? Are you investing right now? I am, yes. Good. So I always max out my Roth IRA. I have since I was like 18. Cool. Um, I have a 401k as well, even though I'm the employer. It's kind of just like, I have an accountant and they're like, just put your money in there for tax purposes, some money in there. So every accountant says to do this. I disagree really? with all the accounts for the 401k. So just I pull just pull it on out. Why? Um, yeah. <sighs> Usually the employer sponsored 401k plans you have to do with ADP or it's like one of those, mm-hmm. like one of those places. The they charge such a high fee. I just, okay. I looked into it. I didn't like any of their funds. And then I'm thinking, well, I think tax rates are going to go up. Mm-hmm. And then I think I'm already in the highest tax bracket. Taxes are only going up. Whatever I save now, I'm probably going to pay more in tax when I'm older and making more money anyway. Mm-hmm. No, I disagree. I Why? think because your, your <clears throat> tax savings that you have, like investing the money, will compound and i think that those savings will like sum to more than however much you pay in tax no in but you pay but you pay the tax later anyway in the whole amount and you don't get long-term capital gains in a 401k it's all taxed as income think about that first that's that's a big one they don't tell you long-term capital gains mm-hmm. you could pull out right now between zero and 20 percent and then of course you have like the millionaire surtax and a three something percent so let's say 23 percent but ordinary income could very well be at that time forty five percent. Maybe it's fifty percent. It's true. That's what I think. I could argue with accountants. I don't know. You're, you're giving me an odd look. I'm kind Jack. of assuming yeah. too that I'm going to be in a yeah. lower tax bracket when I retire. Really? I feel like I'm going to peak while I'm. Okay. I don't know. I feel like YouTube and this whole bubble isn't going to last forever. Really? I'm going to ride it out while I can. But at least you're aptly preparing. True. Because like, like I'm 24 well. now, I don't see myself doing what I'm doing when I'm like 40. What do you see yourself doing? <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd love to go the more like documentary journalism realm. Like I okay. love video as a medium and I want to explore that further. Okay. But for now I'm loving YouTube. Okay. So yeah. Cool. See, I don't know. I always feel like I'm going to make more money in the future. So just, I want to, yes. I just want to I mean, minimize. Yeah. That's, I should yeah. probably, but I would say, yeah, but I would say for you, if, if, if you know for a fact, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket, yeah. then it, then it starts making sense. But you might be surprised this that this could yeah. very well just be the very beginning. I think the whole, uh, like Jack is telling you, you could you could go on this, mm-hmm. that the influencer sponsor space is still really, really small and it's only going to get bigger. Really? Because think about it. You made $2,000 for mm-hmm. 800,000 views. Like mm-hmm. 800,000 people have seen this. You got to think what people are paying for like a Super Bowl ad and then Certainly. dividing that by the number of people you were able to reach in that right. one video. And those I aren't think, even endorsed by the creator spon- of the video. No. It holds the credibility. Right. You know? Yeah. I think I think sponsor rates for influencers is so cheap right now. You mean like brand deals or you mean like AdSense? Both. Okay. They've both continued yeah. to go up. Because brand deals can be really year. high, I feel like. But they well, both continue to go up, though, yes, ever since the beginning. Yeah, and certainly. I feel like they're going to continue. Yeah. Like Brands are con- going to continue realizing how much value influencers <laughs> have. Mm-hmm. And then it's just going to keep going up. As they spend more money, it's going to be like a positive. Yeah cycle yeah i think a lot of uh, companies are sleeping on youtube they just don't know that like 
to to make a YouTube video to reach people who watch like YouTube video, they don't get it. And so right now, like the highest ad rates are from those who usually like like uh, advertise e-commerce stuff mm-hmm. or social media marketing, and they're paying like eighty to a hundred dollars CPMs oh, wow. on some of this thing. It's crazy. Uh, but they're they're doing that because they realize like how valuable that audience is and how easily you could tap into somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, even Facebook rates are slowly starting to go up as people get in on that. I think it's just the beginning. Really? Um, same with sponsorships. I think it's people are overlooking it or just how powerful uh, just someone's word is. Like Nelk, I, I talk about Nelk all the time, but but they could say anything and their audience, they'd get a million people just going on whatever website they, they say. They'll never do a sponsor. I, I Maybe they get endorsed by by some gambling websites now. But <laughs> um, but beyond that, um, you've never seen them really endorse anything other than something they're involved in. And they get millions of people to yeah. go to whatever they want to. So I think it's still cheap. So I think you That's could true. make more That's money. True. I think, yeah, I think as content creators, if you're constantly evolving, yeah, you can be in the game for a while. Yeah. There's always a thought. I'm like, you know, YouTube could just disappear a few years i mean in reality no but i feel like having something that's a little bit more uh yeah i've been worried about that every single year but oddly enough the the longer i've gone on youtube and you've gone on youtube longer than i have Mm -hmm. i feel like the more confident i am that it's not going anywhere that's so true yeah yeah it just gets stronger and larger right yeah so like in the first three years i'm like this last year this is the last year but now like fourth year it's like Maybe it's not the last year. Maybe yeah. we got to. I think the biggest thing is uh, just creator burnout. I would say that that's more likely oh, to happen yeah, than certainly. anything happened to YouTube. And that's on you. That's a really good point. Do you feel burnt out ever? Yes, yeah? definitely. Definitely. I think because I do a little bit more like personal, not necessarily personal content, but a lot of it is like vlogs or things about my life and who I am, which is a very strange thing to share with like hundreds of thousands of people. So I think once I pull back and I'm just creating, talking about subjects that I'm excited about and less about like my life, I get less burnt out. So I think constantly uh, changing ideas, finding ways to get re-inspired and like keeping content fresh, it it helps avoid creator burnout. But yeah, no, definitely I'll go through seasons where the burnout is real. What is something that you are passionate about outside of YouTube and vlogging and stuff like that? Oh, good question. This is a boring answer, but I've like fallen back in love with reading this year. So I'm trying to read like a book a week in 2020. So that's a big, big one where I feel like- Book a week? Book a week. In 2020 or 2020? Oh my God, 2021. What what year are we? (laughs) Time is a concept. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I read a, yeah. So I'd say reading's a big one. Um, I enjoy- like the like a whole different side of the the world of video kind of like i mentioned earlier so like documentaries and things like that so i'd love to work on kind of building skills to get to a point where that's something that i can maybe do or at least be a part of projects alongside that um because i enjoy kind of that like exploring like for example there's a series i have on my channel it's called explore new york city and it's highlighting a kind of under the radar neighborhood that you're not going to find in your tourist book so for example there's this area called jackson heights in queens it is the most diverse neighborhood in the world it's home to over like 80 languages so i love going to a place like that finding a local tour guide through subscribers learning about the culture the history the cuisine um kind of like traveling without actually being able to travel so things like that i love learning about and kind of diving into hmm. that answers your question that is interesting so i want to know a little bit first. more about the books yeah actually. How do you all right do a book should we go week? back how long does that take and we're also what almost halfway into like the first week yes so have you made progress on i have i just book? finished a book yesterday you did, so you're ahead of schedule, ahead of schedule. how do you finish a book that two fast books. unless it's like goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> you guys that would be fun read every goosebumps book yeah. yes. one a week That's for a good challenge yeah wow Wow. Kindles, I sound so cliche, but Kindles and e-readers are game changer because previously I'd wait to go to a bookstore, buy a book, <clears throat> buy one online once someone maybe recommends it. But I have a Goodreads account, so I'll, I'll create like a backlog, essentially of books I'm really excited about reading. And then I can connect Libby, which is a uh, library digital rental app mm-hmm. essentially to my Kindle and rent books for free immediately. So as soon as I finish a book and I'm excited about a new one, I can rent it for free or for just a few bucks off Amazon Mm. um, immediately. Whereas before I'd kind of like wait to get a book. And then with the Kindle, I can bring it everywhere. Like I have it in my purse right now. I read it when I had a little time to kill. What book did you read? I just finished Trick Mirror, which is a book. It's a collection of essays. It's like cultural. She's like a cultural critic. So like feminism and stuff like that, she kind of touches on. And then I read a fictional just for fun book that was called The Seven or Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So those are the two I've read. 
2021. How do you continue to find interesting books like every week? Because even in picking movies, like I can't do it. Like it's I, a hard one. I genuinely, oh, I don't even watch Netflix. movies. Netflix. I can't. It's like 30 minutes just to yes. find one thing and then you I turn it on and it sucks exactly. and you have to find another one. I, I just, I can't even pass. deal with yeah. the stress. So I just turn it off and I don't end up watching like anything because it's so it's difficult true. to continue to find That's you good should movies. should be working. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And then I go back to work. Yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a subscriber's come in clutch. I, a lot of times I'll ask in a, like, a post and be like, what was the best book you read this year? What's well, like a book that was really impactful or you just enjoyed and got lost in and they, they come through. Do you so, do audiobooks as well? I haven't really gotten big into them. I love podcasts, mm -hmm. but listening to like a seven hour book, I'm like, I'd rather just read it. You What's know? your favorite podcast? This one, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your yeah, second favorite answer. podcast then? Okay, if you don't know it, it makes me sound a little crazy, but my favorite murder is my favorite. I love true crime. So. Should we be worried? Yeah, exactly. Like, Watch out. I know. Yeah. Everyone's like, what's wrong <laughs> okay. with you? It is like top 10 podcasts really. on, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I've never gotten into so. that. Any crime shows like that, oh, I can't I'm watch them. It scares me. But my grandma used to watch a whole bunch of things. This was when I was like five or six yeah. years old. Like this, I don't know if it was true crime, but like where people were like just, just the horrible stories. And I'd listen to those and think like that's going to happen to me or like mm -hmm. this is like a break in. So at five or six years old, I would have this thing where I'd have to go around the house. I think it was, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when people have compulsions. Obsessive compulsive. Yeah, OCD. Yeah. And I think it was like a low variance of that because I would have to go and check every door twice yeah. before I went to bed. Because I was afraid if I didn't lock the door, someone was going to come in and yeah. like what I watched on TV was going to happen to I me. Know, this is and true. that lasted years until I finally broke that. But I would have to go and lock every door twice. Grandma scarred you. Oh, yeah. no. Huh? Grandma scarred you. Yeah. <laughs> or grandma uh, shows But it. even now, I, just, I get freaked out because just, I don't like hearing about it. It it's, just freaks me yeah. out because it's like, re it's real. Like, it's different than watching like a zombie movie. But like, I can't do that. Okay. So now that I've gotten my creepy one out of the way, another podcast I've been liking at the moment is called She's on the Money by Victoria Devine. And it uh, it started off as an Australian duo, and it's basically a this millennial money expert who talks mm. about just finances. But I feel like there's not a lot of like female focused material out there, and so that's what kind of drew it to me originally. I was like, okay, here's two women talking about money and applying it to women's lives because I feel like there's a bit of a you know the yeah. disproportion of the gender roles in finance. So really like that one just for kind of touching on women's Why life don't one. you make some personal finance content like that? Your CPMs. You could do I really, know. you would make so well, much tuned. money. I have some more coming out. I've started really? to yeah. like, I'm all about talking about uh, like the base level of financial education. So I made, I've sprinkled in a few videos and they've done really well and they've been, you know, gotten pretty good views from my channel, been received well. So there's more coming out. Noticeable higher CPMs as well. <clears throat> Definitely. You should do, what you should <laughs> do to break important. in that is do a video of what I spend in a week. I've done one of those. You have? Yeah, too? but it was like a year and a half ago. You got to go deep. I make a lot of videos. No, yeah, make another gotta, like, If you do yeah. another one, we're going to definitely yeah, record yeah, yeah. it. We'll, we'll react to it. Make yeah, another okay. one. Well, go find my last one. Think what, or tell me what you think. Okay. And I'll do a quarantine version where it's it, just They do well, too. They, they do, do really, 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 really well. well. What I did, do what I spend in a week. I did mm -hmm. that, and then I did a like mistakes to avoid in your 20s finance videos, and those both did really well view-wise for my channel, and I was like, okay, something's going on here. And so I've since made a few videos on like saving, budgeting, uh, very base level. You know what we do well. Yeah. Knowledge. How to make a hundred dollars a day online in 2021. Ooh, I was you gonna would do <laughs> so well. I actually was just so well. brainstorming a video yesterday about how to invest a hundred dollars and just like basic tips. But making money online can be a really oh, interesting. Oh no, one. I like both the of side those. hustle world. Do it. Start off with how to invest a hundred dollars in 2021. Yes. Wait a few weeks okay. and then how to make a hundred dollars a day. A day online or something. I'd be like yeah. I don't even know what I'd say. Yeah. Grow a YouTube channel overnight. Just watch Graham's videos yeah. and watch yeah. Brian's videos exactly. on that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah, start exactly. off, do Sorry, that, yeah. <laughs> I would start, I would do do those. All right, stay would tuned. They're really, coming out. really, really yes, well. Yes, that's the plan. I have a list of finance videos that Good. I'm excited to make. Cool. Speaking of finance, how many credit cards do you have? I have two. Which Should ones? I well, I had like, I got a beginner um, Discover card just to be able to get a credit good. card. Because, I recommend that one. That's yeah, good. no one would give me a credit card because I was young. Mm -hmm. um, and then now I have the Chase Sapphire. Great cards. I yeah. think you need the Amex Gold. Okay. That would be a good one for dining. Sell me on it. Decent for travel. Uh -huh. uh, they give you, I think it's like, you could find an offer 50,000 points when you spend 5,000 or mm -hmm. three or 5,000 in the first three months. So you get enough points back. Good all around card. 
And uh, I would say good for right now when you're not doing okay. too much traveling, right. but you're still spending some money here exactly. and there. I'd say that's a good card. MX Gold. MX Gold. All right, I'm going to look it up. Yeah. yeah, that's why I got the Chase one. Obviously, it was for travel, but that's not really. Yeah. It's time for me to get another credit card. I so guess. get another credit I think right. now is the time. Yes. Um, before you, uh, are you looking to buy like a house or anything at some point? Or? Not at the, well, I always like to look because it's, I don't know, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Not probably for another couple of years, at least a year or two, but you know, it's in the, it's in the. Where would you be future. looking? I think realistically probably mm. Southern California. So mm. my family's in Orange County and I think there's a few areas left in Orange <clears throat> County that could be interesting to buy into. Um. But I love living in New York, so what I don't about, know if I'd live yeah. there. But. What about taxes? Yeah, taxes that's a in good California. question. The mass, the mass <laughs> exit. It. Yeah, I this know. Is exactly. one of, this is going to be one of the uh, one of the few podcasts that we're going to film in LA because really yeah, most of this after this right. after this is going to be in Las Vegas. Yeah. Well, I guess for me, the day to day living <clears throat> is worth paying a bit more taxes to live near the ocean or live in a place like New York City. But I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, obviously. But have you been to Vegas? I have. Exactly. It's nice. <laughs> nice. You know, hey, you know, it's each yeah. their own. Why do, I, why? I love spending time outside. I love, like, I either love the energy of the city and the hustle and, like, the constant opportunity of a place like New York City, or I love, like, the ocean of California. So, mm -hmm. And I know, I know Vegas, you got, you got some outdoors. I actually did a, a trip with the Vegas Tourism Board, so. Cool. I got a little lay of the land back in the day. Um but yeah, it's a really cool place. But where, where do you waste money? Yeah, what, mm -hmm. what kind of stuff oh, yeah. you spend your question. money on? Okay, how? Let's think about my money breakdown here. Um, I say so. This past year, the one place I probably could cut back is eating out in New York. I ate out a lot because it was like the one social thing. I was like, I'm supporting small businesses, but I probably overdid it a smidge. Um, I would say to give you guys it's a numbers, good excuse. I'm supporting a know, local right? business. I'm like, I'm supporting. It's not lifestyle inflation. I'm supporting local business. And meanwhile, it's like Mastro's, <laughs> the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep our like, local businesses doing? afloat. Yeah. Because um, I know you guys love numbers. I would say I spent probably around per month around like 250 on groceries. And then for eating out, probably like 500 to 600, which mm, isn't. This is New I York know. prices. In New York, you cannot find a meal unless you go to Chinatown, which I love Chinatown. You can't find any meal under like $15 and there's tax and tip. And You have not, to do a millennial money. I know. That you would be to. fun. They would love to do that, yeah. I bet. And it's a bit scary. It's pretty. It's pretty bold for people to put it out there, but it is. I don't know. Everyone's gonna. It. Everyone's gonna like it. Yeah. They are so thorough though on their finances. I hated going through the process because it was yeah. worse than getting a mortgage. Yeah. They oh don't gosh, trust yeah. your numbers. You tell them, and they actually caught a few little errors on my end. Like mm -hmm. I thought my car payment was ten dollars less than it oh, actually oh my was. Gosh, just ten dollars. Like yeah, it was that. something like that. Like yeah. I sent them like six thirty, but it was actually like six forty. Like some they little stuff like that. But they corrected every little thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was it was intimidating for me to, to have them look through everything. Even the yeah. apartment video, which obviously not nearly as much, but they're like, give us the actual statements to like clarify. Like, this is the rent price. This is like gas, electricity, all that. Yeah. Which I'm like, you know, like, yeah. gotta be thorough. Yeah, it's interesting. It, when but, Glamour did their video, it yeah. was just, how much you make? All right, that's good. <laughs> no, nothing whatsoever. But Millennial no Money was like, they're on. I think they saw Millennial Money do it and they're just like, well, we'll, we'll trust them. They must yeah, be, they must we'll be good. Best. That's true. Okay, other areas that I um, splurge. I splurge. Okay, yeah, definitely food, it, travel pre March 2020. Um, maybe like health and wellness. I like, I. Um, have a this is really expensive but I do F45 and for That's an unlimited it. pass so it's a um, workout class essentially mm. where it's like high like hit high in interval interval what is it? high intensity interval training and it's like $300 a month which I know gyms are way cheaper but for me I was like that's gonna be my splurge this year okay because you mm. know mental health benefits physical health benefits can't put a price but, on that stuff. Yeah, even like Equinox is cheaper. So it's nice, definitely yeah. up there. But I think for myself, yeah, it's like things like health and wellness, I'll pretty much be down to splurge on if I'm like, this is gonna make me feel better. The the perks of the industry I'm currently in is that I don't have to spend pretty much anything on fashion or beauty, which I think for most gals in my age range, that would be higher for them. Um I don't know. I'm trying to think of something juicy. Mm. I don't want to make. No, that's not. That's not bad. It's it's good that you aren't spending a ton of money. Yeah, I think know? this year, of course, there's a bit of that scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me reel this in, and I've never been a big spender. Yeah, I wasn't raised that. Wasn't yeah. So I think I've always kind of had this mindset of like every dollar counts. Don't overdo it. 
save for your future. And so hmm. what have you guys talked about on your other podcasts? Like what realms do you guys touch on? Uh, I know you guys get we've talked about different. biggest insecurities. That that's always a fun yeah, one. What if, are your biggest insecurities? If you want to talk Ooh, about that. Okay. Just and in, in general Anything. in life. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys want to go first? Let's hear some of your I've already done I've, I've, I've already, already done, done it. So you know, you've already done okay. it so many biggest times. Insecurities. All right. Yeah. Um, we could go we could go first if that makes you if that makes you feel better. I think I can Okay. I, I can definitely come up with all right, a lot. All right, go for it, go for it. <laughs> um, well, I'm interested. You might not feel this way, but I definitely get insecure about telling people what my job is, for sure. What? Oh, yeah. I hate That's telling people. That's the silliest thing if I've I ever heard. You should be proud street, of that. And they're like, what are you? I'm like, I work in marketing. Don't ask. Why? Do not, you don't feel that way? No. I think I'm still around. Maybe it's the New York hustle, I th- as opposed to like somewhere like Los Angeles, like where people are very accustomed to like social media. And most people in New York, like they don't care. But there are, you know, in general, I think, yeah, being a YouTuber carries a certain connotation or people what? have a certain perception of it or they don't really understand what it actually entails. So I do get a bit insecure about being like this. What? I never would. I, like I would be proud of that. YouTuber with like self importance. Honestly, yeah, I think so. Or <laughs> like, they're like, ah, like I yeah. am like self obsessed type yeah. of thing. Which I don't think the average person who doesn't watch a lot of YouTube doesn't understand like how multifaceted it is. Like you can have a right. finance channel, you can have a tech channel, you can have a travel channel. Like it's not just this like I post like selfies all yeah, the time. Like right. I'm an influencer. I think there's a lot more to it, and there's a lot of value that it can give, etc. But yeah. That's what I'm trying to get over. Really? I'm trying I, to be proud of being like, I'm I think that's silly. I think that's I know, totally silly. You should be proud of it. I yes. never tell people YouTube, by the way. I always say real estate just because I don't want to explain. Exactly. Well, I just don't want to explain. I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah, the I, explanation is different. I that's just don't want to explain it. And then, too, if like a random person is asking me, I'm like, well, now I think you're probably going to go look up my life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't like everything that, about yeah. me. And I'm like, of course, I'm the one that put it out there. <laughs> yeah. But it's like this weird. You know what they do? The first thing they do if I'm like, I do YouTube. Oh, really? What's your channel? Yeah. Graham Stephan. Exactly. Pulled up. They're like, oh, wow. wow. Two and a half million subscribers. Yeah. Um, yo, we should, we should, we should hang out sometime. Yes. We should, we should, uh, you, uh, we'll like, grab great. some lunch. Um, let me get your number real quick. That's what they always do. And I'm like, I don't, I don't give I up know. my number, like, I, but uh, it's awkward. Like, can I get, no, no, you could no. send an email. Oh, an email. Oh, what? <laughs> what the email. I'm like, like, don't worry about email it. Jack. Like, I, yeah. I, che- I check my email a lot. Yeah. You know? yeah exactly. I, that, that's the part. I, so I like saying I'm in real estate, but then you usually get the, Oh, how's the market going? Yeah. I was like, it's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, a place down my street that sold for this. Was that yeah, a good like, price? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know, maybe. Possibly. So it's just the explanation. And I think it's yeah. becoming more normalized. It is. So as it gets more normalized, yeah. and as I make content that I really enjoy to yeah. make. Um, <clears throat> All right, I well, guess. I never would have guessed that. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Maybe that's... Okay, I'm feeling is, more is confident. That, yeah, okay. getting over the what, right now. All right, what else? Let's work on this. What else? <laughs> okay, now you guys have to share one. Um, well, mine was my height. So that was what oh, my height, that was and then too when I was younger, really, because I'm so tall. How tall are you? I'm six feet with no shoes on. So any shoes on, I'm like six one. Wow. Yeah. But you could reach like the top cabinets. That's it's, something yeah, I could never true. do. <laughs> I gotta like stand on the countertops to reach the very top ones. I can always. Yeah. yeah. That is. Yeah, there's perks. Yeah. There's pros and cons. Jack, you're next. Um, <laughs> it's the stupidest one you're going to, uh, I don't like how pale I am. I'm really pale. Cause you're under eye bags. I you guess, I guess it has to do with the like my, right out there. It's just it's under, boring. well, it's been so overcast lately. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. It's and really also I work right inside. Now, like I can't go outside and I spend most of my day working. I can't like go outside. You gotta bring the laptop outside. That's what I do. Cause like I'm this past year I'd that. go, yeah. I'd go, I stayed at my parents for a bit <clears> when the pandemic was getting gnarly and yeah, I'd work outside and just. I love working outside. <laughs> like, yeah, all right. Sorry, we put Jack on the spot here. Gonna have a whole bunch of comments. Jack's not pale. He's not pale. I know. Yeah, I know. It's so weird because yeah. we did a podcast where we talked about yeah. our biggest insecurities and then we opened up, you know, and we right. talked about it. And then him. people are like, yeah, yeah, well, like, like Graham was okay disclosing his, you know, Andre, who was our guest, was okay disclosing his. I was a little bit, like, more iffy right. on it, but it's I just did it. And then everyone in the comments was like, oh, you don't have to worry about that, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Jack and Jack's like, other one was, he <laughs> says he doesn't have a symmetrical face, which is like, I thought he's just like the most... It's stupid true. thing. Uh, it's, no. Look, you, I mean, you can see. None of us have symmetrical faces. I know, but some more un- asymmetrical than. Do you others. really think? Do you think Jack's face is symmetrical? No, I think, I think it is. It's okay if you say no because no, I know it's, it's not. So <laughs> but, but it's it's so weird stupid. because now people in the comments, I still yeah. get comments to this day that are like, Jack, you don't have to worry about that. Oh. Your face is so symmetrical, oh. and like <laughs> that's kind of sweet. But 
I know it's really sweet and I really appreciate yeah. those comments. Like, don't get me wrong, I totally do. But I just don't want that to be like a talking point. True. You know exactly. Because I mean? I'm consistently getting to it. Yeah. Because yeah. like, like, I'm things. Some people commented on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> my mom follows me. Over. And they're like talking, like, they're like, Oh, I see what you mean now with the asymmetricalness. <laughs> and then someone no. someone responded to it and they said, How could you say that? And there's like this fight going on in one of my pictures oh on my I love Instagram this. Where two people are going back and forth about my asymmetrical oh or symmetrical. Oh my gosh. Face. Yeah, that's it's the just like so much attention. Too much to it. Vulnerability. I know. People dig in deep. Yeah. Someone's gonna come up to you in person eventually. Like, and say like, wow, let me so see your face. Wow, it's like Pulled really that mask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have oh, nothing to so worry true. about, man. It, it's wow, not like you're I'm a lot less pale in person. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> it's not like a huge expected. deal, yeah. you know. I do get that, like in public, because I'll say, and somebody's like, oh, I'm taller. They'll like see how tall I am, but then in public, people are like, oh my god, you're a giant, just because yeah. I'm taller than most people expect. Yeah. Is your boyfriend taller than you, or are you taller than your boyfriend? He's a bit. He's probably like an inch and a half taller. Okay. He would say he's taller than that. He's probably like 6'2". Okay. Yeah. All right. He says 6'3". Okay. Sorry, Fletcher. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I use my height? I said that one earlier. You said that one earlier. Like yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I've done two. You guys have done only done one. Okay. Uh, mine, um, I can't grow a beard. Me neither. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> well, <that's>, I know. <laughs> I don't like my body hair. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Um. Okay, I can think of a good one. I don't like my nose. Because <laughs> when I smile, it goes down. All of us do. Yeah. Mine, uh, mine goes flat. Like when I <laughs> so smile, mine, yeah, yeah. When I smile, it goes yeah, down. Mine goes, and, like, mine goes down. Yeah. Hook Why? I, I like that. What? what? I've never noticed that. It's oh, like, I hate. Yeah, I hate see, it. Yeah. Now people are gonna notice it. Yeah. Like, oh, I see what you mean. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Why did I draw attention I, to it? Yeah. Like if I'm standing normal, but if I smile, it dips. But yeah, no. No, yours, no, yours doesn't do that. It's crazy. I one time had this stranger because I when I was I traveled solo. I lived in France solo for a bit. And I just had one time I was like sitting in an Eiffel Tower myself being all a melodramatic 19 year old. And this man came up to me. He's like, I love how expressive your nose is. Like, and I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? And then after that, I've now always noticed that my no nose way. moves when I talk. I'm how like, expressive it is. Just Who says that? That guy's a weirdo. Was he, was, he, was he hitting on you? Or was so. it just like a one? I was like, I want to sculpt you. And I was like, this is getting weird. I need to go. This is New York. This is Paris. I want yes. to sculpt you. Yeah, I feel yeah. like this is something that the locals say to like the tourists. It's like a really way to weird. like. I know. I know. That's that's funny. I'm I sorry. Could, yeah, that's, that's a weird. That's got to be a numbers weird. game sort of pickup line. Yeah, like, like he like, just goes in work. and says like, "I love how expressive," and then insert body part here. Let yeah. me sculpt yeah. you. Like, you want to sculpt my nose? <laughs> and then like out of a hundred times, it's got to work <laughs> once. It's got to yeah. work enough for him to continue wanting to I do know. this. I know. People hmm. are weird out there. That should be your go-to pickup line. What? I want to sculpt you. I want to sculpt you. Come back to my place right yeah. now. Yeah. You just make like you. a little like claymation. <laughs> yeah. like, just imagine it's, it's really bad. It's just horrible. Like, you know, in third grade, how you have yeah. like the clay and you like, like, like piece them together. It like, looks, like a, looks like a snowman other. a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. I can see it now. <laughs> it's a numbers game. You just, you say it enough. Eventually someone's going to yeah, be like, yeah. It's bound to work yeah. one of the times. I'm going to love that. Hmm. Have you guys ever lived outside of the States? Uh. I've been here always. Canada, right? Yeah, my half my family is Canadian, so mm -hmm. I would go and spend about two months a year. Okay, there. We're in Canada. Which part? Uh, by Toronto, nice. London, Ontario. Okay. To be specific, but I would spend about two months a year up there in the summer, up until maybe I was like eighteen mm -hmm. or nineteen, and then it went down to like a few weeks at a time. And now I have not been up there in maybe two years. Gotcha. Uh, and now Las Vegas. Nice. There we go. Basically yeah. another another world away. Have Everybody? you? Yeah, I was born in France. I lived there until I was four, but I'm not actually French. My parents were just working there. They didn't teach me French, which mm. I'm still bitter about. Um, but I was 18. Well, I started university. I started at Zusa Pacific, which is a university in East LA, and didn't like it. And so after a year of it, I was like, screw it. And I um, went online with my classes and like dropped out of school, went to a community college online for like a little over a semester, and then moved to France on my own. I was an au pair or a nanny out wow. there. So. A nanny. <clears throat> yeah, there's like a, you can be in a, a, an au pair essentially and like live with a family for free and then watch their kids part of the day and then just do your own thing. I didn't speak French. I don't know anybody. I just kind of like sent it, but. Do you not speak when, French? Uh, not really. Just don't poo. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that. <laughs> and that's when the man <laughs> said he wanted to scold my nose. So. <laughs> yeah. And I've not been back since. Yeah, I'm like, oh gosh. Imagine if we asked, how was the sculpture? Was it good? <laughs> I know. I went the opposite <laughs> direction. Not today, sir. <laughs> It's if funny because I've never told the story now, like hundreds of what, people are why do, hear about this. I feel like you should make the, the story time, right? Like um, I would have some good study or uh, abroad story times. Like for what sure. else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this one, let's see. 
Well, one time when I, so I like, this one's not, it's not that this is like particularly funny, but when I, so I backpacked alone in Switzerland for a while. This is another one I've never told anybody because I didn't want to freak anybody out, but I was up and I was staying in this really small hostel and I like got sick and I literally had a, I fainted and had a seizure traveling solo. What? And thankfully someone found me, but I never told anybody <clears throat> because I was like, oh no, because I was a little bit younger too. I was like, my parents are going to like. I mean, I was paying my own how, way, of course. My parents would never let me go. Um, I think I was like 19 or 20 at the time. So okay. not so young. No, I, right, I was like 16. Okay, I thought but like you like no, 14, no, no, 15. No, like no, what? No, okay. Not that young on the All right. Road. Okay. Um, but traveling solo is always a fun time. I traveled how, solo in Berlin. How did that too. happen? Did they save you out of the seizure? Yes. There was like how conveniently a nurse checking in and was like you, at the same hostel. And she's like, let me help you. Or she like saw me fall. And then is that the first time you've had a seizure? Yeah. First and only time. Why? I think it was like high altitude because I was in the Swiss Alps, blood pressure, but. That causes. So how long were you seizing? Not for long. It wasn't that bad. They took you out of the seizure? Seizure? I don't know. Seizure, can you say? just like wake up. I don't know. know. You're saying like seizure salad. (laughs) (laughs) The seizure? I don't know. I woke up and I was like, there's people standing over me. I was like, oh my. What did it feel like? uh, It's like the, have you guys ever fainted? No. It's like black like starts to like it's kind it's of purple freaky. yeah it's like purple. blackish purple dots start to close in and then it goes all black i've never fainted have yeah, you don't faint yeah. don't do it <laughs> why how um dude i got my wisdom teeth pulled out and oh, yeah. i woke up really late at night it was like 1 a.m and i had to pee mm-hmm. so i went into the bathroom and i peed and then i went i was walking back to my room and i looked at myself in the mirror in the bathroom and i just felt like weightless oh and my I was gosh like, uh-oh surprise and was, you're actually all like mushrooms yeah i'm like what something? is happening i was out of it out yeah. of my yeah. mind and i just like i started falling and i grabbed onto the towel rack and i just like pulled it down oh, it made gosh. like a huge ruckus wow. things started falling on the ground and it just collapsed on the ground oh, man. and then i just heard like someone barreling down the hallway and my dad opened up the bathroom oh, no. and was like, what is going on right now i'm like 18 you know like oh, i should wow. be falling down and that was it never yeah. fainted good was it ever scary traveling alone um a bit there was a few times where when i was in because i was 18 when i was in paris so i was a bit naive so there's a few times where i probably should have been safer than i was um i went to berlin germany alone and it wasn't scary but i went to a few clubs alone or like met somebody there like met a, a friend through a friend and like would go out to the clubs and then being out really late alone is not always the best call but overall i think it's uh especially i've only done it in european countries i haven't done it in other parts of the world so in european countries as long as you're pretty smart about it and you overall are safe like i wouldn't recommend going out late alone and drinking or something like along those lines but if you're playing it safe it's definitely doable and i think it's like such a good uh experience for most people i've heard it's, it's more dangerous for some of the guys getting mugged or like lured away or like uh like they put stuff in drinks and then you're you're out and they take your wallet and stuff no i, I heard I it's know. worse I, for I, guys just, like, yeah intuitively i feel like it would be more dangerous for the girls i don't i don't know i mean i would feel safer yeah. as a guy walking than i would as yeah. a girl i just i don't know that's intuitively. Yeah. I, I, that's I, not yeah, backed I, up. I feel like they would go after science. a guy just, because, like, they'll they'll have money or a wallet or something. Just but, the but a woman would have a purse yeah. that would be like exposed, and your wallet would be. I guess so. Yeah. yeah, it's just risky across the board. I guess so. Safe. What is your least favorite place you visited? Like, was any place just miserable? <gasps> Should I say Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> oh, I feel like pretty much everywhere I've gone. Wait, is the worst? Complain. Oh, you like everywhere you yeah. go. Oh, okay. I didn't love Vegas. That was the one spot. <laughs> I didn't love Vegas. I didn't love Vegas. It's not bad. You didn't right, see right, right, okay. the nice parts, you no, know, when you start seeing yeah. Summerlin. Yeah, when you see, yes. yeah, when you see yeah. those areas, it's nice. I'm not a fan of the Strip at all see, in Las Vegas. I, just I can't stand the Strip, and no. I know there's so much more to it, and I'm just putting it in a small box. Yeah, I, I, had, yeah. I need to explore more. I I'm originally did not want to move to Vegas. I, I thought, like, as cool as it could be, I just don't like it. Yeah. Until I saw Summerlin and Henderson. Okay. Saw the communities and instantly I was sold. See, I feel like that's what yeah. I try out. Yeah. And what's your game plan? Like, what to you is bigger than making money at this moment or building like your YouTube career? Oh, those are good questions. Well, I think when the world opens up again, I would love to travel full time for a year. Maybe get a van. Mm-hmm. A van in Europe you could would do be that really now. cool. Okay. I know, I know. But that would be that's neat. True. Van that's in Europe. True. Yeah. I, I love we'll international travel. So I'd love to spend a year. If you guys know the channel, Car and Nate, you should check them out. They're really cool. Yeah, there's the whole travel sector of YouTube that I'm a big fan of. And they just like went for a year and their channel blew up because they just mm. dedicated and they just for a full year, they're like, I'm going to travel and go for it. That's something I'd love to do. Maybe get a van in Europe. Um, and then, yeah, keep trying YouTube out and then potentially kind of shift into other careers 
taking the skill sets that I've taken here and, and moving on forward. Kind of like we talked about earlier, might be in mm-hmm. a lower tax bracket. So hoping to save up a bunch now and then have that flexibility in years okay. to come. Is that preferable to you to change out of the YouTube career and to go on somewhere else? Or is that like a game plan that is like <clears throat> secondary that would be like... Yeah, it's hard to catch. say. I think kind of like I said, yeah, you, I don't know. YouTube is so nuanced and I think the category I'm in is interesting this like lifestyle sphere so i think if i could keep shifting and creating content that i'm really excited about i could see myself doing this for a while you could do a reaction channel those are my th- I, I love it? that yeah. you should start reacting All right, to what, stuff. Should I, what should i react to what would you do what like, jubilee oh jubilee, you know jubilee. Be amazing? so yeah. i love jubilee the 30 versus so, one series yeah, would yeah. Be i love amazing. like the, yeah. the dating stuff because yes. i like to understand what's going on in people's yeah. heads yeah so like when they're talking about like what they find attractive mm-hmm. or what they don't find attractive all that stuff is so fast. Is there a female version of that? Like someone reacting to that from a woman's perspective? Because I feel like it's all guys. It's Dude, all guys. You know what it is? Yeah. It's like I watched, um, I don't really watch PewDiePie, but I watched this video because it was his reaction to yeah. like a 30 V1 or something. Yeah. Or where a guy picks out the most attractive right. women. Right. Oh gosh, okay. they're so cringy, but interesting. They are. <laughs> they are interesting. Yeah. And you know, the women pick out who they think is most attractive one right. through five of themselves. Yeah, but that's based of, oh. I think they base theirs on personality. Yeah, they, well, yeah. kind mm, of. Interesting. And, yeah. and they kind of had a skewed idea. And I'm like wondering, like, I feel like it's kind of obvious who is more attractive <laughs> and who isn't out of this right. group, right? And then PewDiePie went in and he was like, okay, clearly it's just this, 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 this. Yeah. And he, did, he labeled them right. one through five as most to least. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I think guys are pretty much so all like, on the same page. So it's like yeah, somewhat yeah. objective oh, to, okay. to some guys. I'm not going to say there is like one objective, right. you know, okay. idea of what beauty is. But like in some cases, you know what I mean? Do you I think mean? the women wanted to actively choose a diverse yes. group of people yes. to kind of be like, hey, we're not, I, you know, standing I think by so. the Potentially, some, Yeah, sometimes when they were organizing it i felt like are they trying to be polite that's what or I like thought. are they oh, trying to be yeah. like Ooh, because some of those that. some of those were like i i definitely don't deserve to be a number one but they're you so should, pretty but you know? <laughs> yeah I, like, I'm like, oh, but you're so pretty you should be number two no no i should be number three it's because it's they already that, have the confidence they know they can take the hit you know so they can give someone else that's maybe true isn't as attractive that's true boost. that's true or they don't want to appear on cameras like Guys, yeah. obviously, I'm the number one. Come on. Well, like, also, they don't want to be, be on camera. Like, overconfident is unattractive. Yeah. Overconfident, of yes. course. So they they would rather be called attractive than yeah. think that they're attractive themselves. I feel like. Right. Also, you know it I mean? depends what sector they're in. Like, for example, my roommate's a model, and like, you know, sh- she'll be because she's actively around the most beautiful people, mm-hmm. like as viewed societally in the world, like. I don't think she's as confident as she deserves to be because I'm like, I see her, I'm like, you're absolutely beautiful. Like, you're literally a model in Vogue, like, working for Chanel, whatever. Mm -hmm. But because she's surrounded by these people, like, I think, you know, there's, like, a song lyric where it's, like, yeah, models essentially are, like, it's a Billie Eilish song lyric where it's, like, swimming pool. I don't know. It's, like, something to do with, like, models' tears because models are so If two drops could be bottled, there'd be swimming pool. Yes, you know it. Exactly. How do you know this? That's like the Dedication. one Billy yeah. Eilish song that Same, I Same, like. right, where I'm like, why did that just come Wait, so what is it, Jack? It's a profound lyric. What is it? it is. Uh, if teardrops could be bottled, there'd be swimming pools filled by models. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes the most beautiful okay. people are still the most insecure sure. based off the environment they're in. So maybe they really do. I don't know. Right. I'll have to watch the video. Yeah. Okay. Give it a good little analysis. Watch the video. So Re- react. react to it. I think that would be interesting it. to get your perspective. And you yes. have to be completely objective because it would right. be not very, it'd be kind of worthless to, to watch someone say like, Oh, you know, and then they like, obviously they're hmm. not giving what they believe to be true. You gotta be harsh. But, yeah. about, be but harsh. I feel like there's different beauty ideals to different people. A hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I don't want to go right. into like there I is, know. you know what I mean? It's, it just I'm feels like, wrong. It's like who creates the beauty ideals? Like it's just passed on for media and then who creates those? Like, I don't know. It's like cyclical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It yeah. would be interesting though to get your opinion on that. I know. Like, I'd love to watch opinion. it. Maybe a good, uh, I would start doing back. that. That's yeah. another thing. You could do that from a van. This Graham is, is not giving up on I'm not, that. Because I, I know. For the van. Because I know. I know that you would be able to increase your income by like 30 to 50% if you did the van and posted twice a week from the van. Twice a week? Twice a week. How long did it take you guys to edit? I guess you edit. We do How seven videos a week. Videos? Jack does four a videos. I do three videos. The video I'm doing right now, I'm already five hours into it and I'm like less than halfway through. The article okay. one's taking forever. Oh yeah, like it's gonna be Photoshop a good, it's gonna be a good video but though. How do you guys do that? I can barely pump out. Because you get used to it. One to two, I know, but I'll work like, like for me, I'll take like 15 to 20 hours to edit a video. And then I'm trying to do other things like I'm doing Instagram campaigns and whatever that like, I feel like I work a full work Maybe week. Maybe too much B-roll. 
maybe too yeah, much. Yeah, because like vlogs and stuff like that take a really cinematic. long time. I'm trying I've, to get an editor. I've noticed sometimes with some of the vlogs, it's just like the quick cuts, no editing, just. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 you can tell <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are the those are the videos <laughs> that um, that tend to do the best. Like yeah. I am a true believer. Uh, and Shelby Church is like this too. Her videos mm-hmm. are so well crafted. They're so right. cinematic. It's like you're watching a movie. But sometimes it's just you want to click a video, zone out for 12 minutes, right. and just be done. And like you, you don't appreciate all the B roll, all the work that goes in versus like, and then flip the camera, flip it back. Like it's sometimes I feel like that's good enough. It's good enough. That's like, true. I think it really depends on the topic. Because, yeah, if you're just, like, sitting down and you're sharing information, yeah. I feel like you can just chop it up real quick, yes. edit it, and put it out. But, but you then could, sometimes yeah. you want it to be cinematic. Sometimes I'd probably go overboard. I feel like if you took your editing down, you cut it in half, yeah. but you posted twice the content, you would get 90% of the benefit for half is, the work. Yeah. No? I disagree. I th- I really appreciate the cinematic stuff. Like, I genuinely right. do, just as a viewer, I think it enhances the experience you, a lot. But, and also... I think your time value as just like an influencer is so much more worthwhile mm. than like, you know, your time value as an editor. I encourage you to yes. outsource your editing. I've, just this past year, I finally started, I put out like on my Instagram story, I was like, I need an editor. So I'm slowly starting to test it out. Starting to be in your area. Teacher. Like one okay. that you will yes. be able to talk to. This get is a what, jack. This is get what a we're jack. Yeah. Yeah. So like I would edit yeah. the phone calls, which were super easy, just camera switching mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then I started editing all the other stuff on the second mm-hmm. channel. Right. Of course, I watch his videos, so I'm familiar with it. That helps a lot. Totally. And then I, w- I watched over his shoulder as he edited a video. Oh, that and is smart. And that took, that, we did yeah. like two hours of that maybe. And mm-hmm. then he handed it over to me and I edited the second half of the video. I watched right. him edit and I critiqued. And he nice. watched behind yeah, the no, shoulder. And yeah. that video. And then for the next, wow, okay. the next probably two months, yeah. every single video that I did, um, Graham and I would rewatch it together and we would point out That's like really a lot of the things that we did. So mm-hmm. we'd be like, okay, what about this cut? What about this as B-roll? Oh, what do you think about this, Gar- Graham? Those are the days. Those are fun. Those are the good so days. You, you missed that. You yeah. missed those. And we would yeah. do that. He would come down for and you. go yeah. through everything together. And yeah. it took a while, but I was able to understand his thought process as mm-hmm. he's editing. And then of course, I can't mirror it exactly. I can come pretty close, but then I can also enhance it with my own totally. kind of like idea yeah. and creativity and stuff like that. So I, th- yeah. I feel like it's a good blend when they're able to understand what that you know i know what you want Mm -hmm. in a video and then i can also add on what i think might be funny or creative yeah yeah Yeah. i love that jack edits better than i do for the second show because you put some the time yeah and some of the jokes what was it you talked about leonardo dicaprio and you put like adam sandler like i don't know (laughs) yes there was something that you did like that it was so funny yeah yeah uh i forget what it was but it's just it's it's better because jack could put in the time Mm -hmm. that i could not put in that's that's fair. Yeah, I feel like a lot of what I put out so far, I do kind of rely on that cinematic value, and that is an element that I've like consistently tried to include. But outsourcing, I think, is definitely going to be. A and you can make yeah. so much more money I if know, you're just like filming content. and putting out more content. I know. And then just outsourcing this stuff because it's like the eighty twenty rule. It's like right. you're spending so much time editing. Totally. When in reality, like that is not worth mm-hmm. a lot of money. You exactly. Know what I mean? Well, then do you ever run out of video ideas? If you guys are putting all out so the much time. content. You all do. the time. All the time. I don't have a video planned for Friday. So like you that's really my. You just pull it out of thin air and yeah. just go for it. Oh, well, that's no, I read it. I spend like hours well, every day yeah, reading the markets and I'm hoping there's like some story that comes up that I can talk about. But if there's nothing, yeah. Jack and I will usually talk about like what good video can I make that's different enough that I could just, I need to plan something. Because yeah. if I don't do something in a day, I, I'm a day behind. Okay. So then the seven videos you're making, week, are you, you guys aren't putting out seven videos a yeah, week, we, yep, are you? We are. We've Across been doing that for rooms? over a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. This is a Sunday. Okay, I think I need to follow your episode. second channel better. Yeah. Second channel's three days a week. Main channel. Oh, and then this pod, this podcast. This is Sunday. Too. Yeah. So we oh have Monday, goodness. Wednesday, Friday, main channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, second channel. Yes. Sunday, this. And you guys so. plan on doing that forever or the next? As year long or two. as we can. Yeah. 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 As long as we can. <laughs> I mean, I I think like really year by year because I can't think like twenty years out like doing three videos, seven videos a week. Um, but for the next like year, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we'll just, we'll play it by ear and we'll, we'll adapt as needed. Out. Yeah. Okay. So Damn, I do want to say and challenge. emphasize this a lot though. Mm-hmm. I am not a huge fan of just like the lifestyle content in general, right. 
But I really would watch every single second if you mm-hmm. went over a Jubilee video. Yeah. Ooh. Every oh, single second I would watch okay. it. And I would be so content watching it. Yeah. I would get a nice snack. I would yes. sit in front of my yeah. TV. Oh, yeah. And make it like, it on. you could yeah. make those like 20 minutes long totally. and people would just, watch all 20 minutes. That's the kind of video yeah. like you'd see like pop up on your feed and you get like that little excitement. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and your chest like, is. oh, yeah. Like, let's like, <laughs> let me get ready for this video. Yeah. And you yes. get ready for it. And you get excited for it. That's I would love to watch that video. I feel like you got to like, it's all about the slow integration to your audience because I think if I did like a full 180, they'd, I'd no, get like- I don't think so at all. I'd get like 20% of I don't, these. I don't like think, get, no, I like, don't think so really? at all. I think if you just said like, hey guys, so like we just went out yeah. th- today and like for 20 seconds, blah, 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 like, no, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, we just got back. Listen, <laughs> and, and show it like a yeah, vlog style, yeah. like turn your, your totally, computer around. that's true. Look at this, this video from Jubilee, 30 let's versus one. It. We gotta watch this, like this yeah. is crazy enough. So okay. let, let's go I in totally and you can make it cinematic. Like you could show the camera like over your right. back as you're watching it, totally. have a camera in the front and just like Bring talk as you go. 20 cent coffee. So it's 20 cent iced coffee and just critique the video. Yes. I think that okay, would be really, really insightful. Smart. Is yeah. incorporating it into that vlog style so it's like a little mix I w- of the two worlds. I have a feeling yeah. and you could test this out next week okay. if you could. That video would get more views than your other videos. Okay, within, so I, I would say plate. within seven days that video How would get... How would you get, title it? Um, I feel like that's the real challenge. How does... Um, my like, my, I don't know if you do my response. Know. You just yeah. want to copy whatever PewDiePie is doing. Okay, that's literally we'll just, PewDiePie just put your put your face in yeah. the thumbnail the, over their thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, all exactly. you need. Maybe yeah, a little yeah. drop shadow or something like that. Yeah. That's you're good. Oh my god, my or viewers some, will be like, who are yeah. you? What's or s- <laughs> <laughs> or some sort of comment or remark that intro. You want to use the title like the thirty yes, versus like one. To Jubilee, mm-hmm. da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't know if my response to is is going to be good to or hit reacting. like that. I don't know. You could be like vlog and reaction. No, I wouldn't do vlog. I would reacting. Could be Vlogs honestly do, like, good some enough. Of the best of my channel, though. Really? When I put vlog in there, yeah. Reacting to. Reacting to, yeah. And that wouldn't be a terrible video to make. Like you just kind of watch the and video. Easy. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow, it'd be it's fun. Changing. It's new. Same time yeah. I'm filming. Right. Try it. But you have to be blatant with like, like what you this say. Is how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ooh. pause it right before and you order them around. You got to be yeah. like one, two, yeah. three, four, five. You could start with the guy one. You could start with the guy yeah, one first. Because the, the guy one might be a little easier to do. I feel a little do. worse judging women than men. <laughs> <laughs> women like band together. Like they're yeah, in a group. I'm like, they're we like, we're, we're, I'm not going to yeah. like trash any of these no. people. Like talk bad about them. I can talk them. about the men though. Yeah. Talk, the about, men talk about the men. Like, All right. Here are my thoughts. I think that would be a great episode. I have a feeling. It, I, th- I think 100K. It just, yeah, it all depends yeah. on this. Okay. Just, just title and thumbnail. That's all it is. Because the video I know you're going to do well. Title and thumbnail. I love this. Damn, the guy should just be my content like strategy. Yeah, <laughs> it's so easy because you see it. It's like already proven yeah. out. It's like it uh, works. empirical it works. evidence yeah. because Jubilee puts a video and it gets 10 million views yeah. plus. Yeah. And you're like, okay, if there's That's interest so of 10 million yeah. people and people know me yeah. and I have an audience, so they're willing to watch it as mm-hmm. well. It's like, it's proven. The proof is in the pudding. It is. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you know what? I'll take credit for this too. Um, Shelby, a while ago, I yeah. told her to get a Tesla Model 3 because of how much content she could make yes, from that. She's been pumping out those Tesla videos, I feel like. So, some of those are her most popular videos because okay. I was telling her, like, you got to get them all. The, the whole community is huge. And yeah. if she made Tesla videos, right. it would blow up. And she did. And I also told her, Make a video about how much money you've made on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Those, Guess which? I know. I was watching video, those the other day. Her video got yeah. more views than any other video that I've done on that. And yeah. hers, I think, is one of the most viewed videos, if not the most viewed video on, on how much wow. I got, how much I make with like a million subscribers or something yeah. like that. It's like 7 million, 8 million views, some crazy amount. You could do that. Yeah. You could say. I did consider that. And just yeah. show your revenue and not right. sponsorships. Oh, I know. Now it's time for you to do that. Low. Like Everyone's doing that now at the end of the year. Yeah. You could do how much what money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much I made with 500,000 subscribers. Totally. Or how much I make with 500,000 subscribers. Uh, that's the title. Yes. And don't go into... Maybe you could do on sponsorships and whatnot. Depends. Yeah. If you want yeah. to lump it, like lump some <laughs> lump them, it all right. together. Like I'm not, you know, by NDA, like I'm not able yeah. to disclose yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Totally. And then just yeah. you know. I did actually watch yeah. just a bunch of. I just watched Shelby's. There's a YouTuber Ali Abdal. Yep. You know. Oh yeah. yes. Look at. 50 oh my minutes. gosh. Yeah. Fifty that minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I watched most of it. I work. <clears throat> I usually what I'll do is I'll put a YouTube video on and then I'll work out and it like motivates me to keep working yeah. out because I'm distracted from the pain. Yeah. And I watched that one. I did skip through a little bit, but yeah, like a million. 
Yeah, like one point so two million pounds or something. So one and a half million crazy. dollars. Yeah. So Courses, if you man. if you do Courses. this video, yeah. and you make it cinematic in your style, yes. Like you Game talk changer. about how you got started, mm -hmm. your bit of your story, and then you show the beginning and the middle and the end and yeah. how much money you make, and make it like a fifteen minute video. I, th I think easily a, yeah. a million view video. I bet that would get like really good RPM. Yep. Money. So there we go. We already got a few Love topics it. for you Thanks, to take guys. away with, um, and that, and and in the van. I really yeah. believe, like, if you just if you just follow this, it's it's a system. Mm -hmm. It's the system. This is what YouTube wants. The algorithm is speaking through me <laughs> to you I'm and telling you what it, what it wants. And yes. this is what it wants. To live vicariously through I know. you. But it's it. all it's, about your van life. It's, Don't it's worry. interesting because I feel like I could just come up with these great ideas for other people, and then yeah. for myself, I'm like I'm out of ideas. Hey, maybe backup plan. You just become like a travel just, consultant. Yeah. <laughs> van or you, you I could run do, like I, a strategy firm. I would. YouTubers. I would love that. You know, like I would yeah. love it where you have like your income. Let's we'll just we'll just mm -hmm. call it two hundred, yeah. and I'll be like, we'll split, or we'll like I'll get twenty percent from everything you make above two fifty. So like the okay. first fifty k, I help you make more. Yes. That's yours. But everything over two fifty, mm -hmm. I'll get twenty percent of that. <laughs> it's like a few years. There you go. But you just gotta listen. I feel like that that would be. <laughs> what could we, I don't know. Being any, a consultant, essentially, yeah, yeah, you do a consultant. But being paid on income, like I want to be paid on income. Smart. Like income right. above a certain threshold. If you just Listen, it's a good plan. Yeah, if any creators are out there watching know, this, you know, email. let Graham know. Tune in. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be opposed. I think for the right opportunity, I, I would, I would do it. Be but smart. Uh, it's an investment as well. I feel yeah. like yeah. loosely, <clears throat> that's what Ali's uh, YouTuber Creator Academy. I'm butchering the name. He created a course, mm -hmm. an expensive course. I feel like not that exactly, but essentially having people buy in and he like tells them how he created his channel and yep. I'm sure gives advice and the whole deal. Yeah, so. but he's not taking a percentage. I'm talking no. like, you know, Give we're really going to get down and dirty and we're going to split. Gonna take the time. Yeah, really going to do one on one, but I, I get 20 percent. That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're pretty much. We're, but I think we're good. I, I yeah. do want one yeah. thing, though. Yes. Yeah. Because you are so fast. you are successful and you are young. OK. I think it would help if you gave us some advice. Mm. And it doesn't even have to be about personal finance or about YouTube. You're obviously doing well in life. What what can you advise Ooh, us on? Doing well in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try my I think I'll go off one thing that I'm trying to work on is for one, I feel like I've I've been fortunate enough to kind of find this career that I'm actually like pretty happy to get up in the morning and work on, which I can't say is the same for a lot of people my age. So that has been a huge benefit. And I feel like you guys have already kind of mm -hmm. found that. But one thing I'm working on doing is taking myself a little less seriously and learning to chill more, which I feel like you guys could probably do as well. I think, you What know. do you mean? What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, Flips get, the table. Yeah. <laughs> get out. Um, How I know. dare you? <laughs> yeah. I feel like Insult yeah. me in my own house. <laughs> out yeah. of here. I I certainly, and I feel like when you work for yourself, it's easy to just work 24 seven. So I've been trying to be a little bit more active this year at learning to actually, you know, go, if we've gotten to a point where we're able to, uh, you know, we've made good money, we've found a level of success, take that time to enjoy it, which I am not good at. I am like an achiever at heart where I'm like, I need to be productive 24 seven, or I feel like I'm like messing yeah. up. So I am actively working on learning to, yeah, I guess just be more present and intentional and like, be appreciative of the moment. And that is really cheesy, but that's what came to not mind bad. first. So I found it helps when you when you talk about like not taking like like enjoying it a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes it really hurts my work. And I was I was I <laughs> so that's, that's the exact point. point of it, man. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Just just hear me out, okay? Uh, I've always had this issue where yeah. like if I take a few days off or I go and like do something it's so difficult for me to get back in the focus of, of work and I find it like, oh, it's like a grind and mm -hmm. I just, I'm more likely to like slack off and not do things. And so just never it was, it was <laughs> Alex Becker that got me into the whole dopamine detox. And at first okay. I thought it was like crazy, but his thing was that when you deprive yourself of, of like a fun and yeah. like just all this like stimulus out there, like not the stimulus, but, but like, you know, movies and like all these things. Uh, your brain kind of resets to find the more boring things fun. Mm. So that like, if you are not like used to leaving your house, you would find the most exciting thing to do is like, let's work and like plan out videos and like edit and like all that. And it becomes so much fun. But as soon as you experience all this other stuff that like really gives you those big like hits of dopamine, it becomes harder to get back into it because all of a sudden your, your brain is like needing more than 
sitting in front of a computer editing is able to offer you. So sometimes when I just find myself in front of the computer for like two weeks straight working, I get so in the zone and just produce like such amazing results because there's like no outside distractions at all. And like, that's what my brain now finds exciting. It's like the hedonic treadmill, but like down. It's like you're sloping down on the hedonic no, treadmill. No, it's not. Rather than up. Uh-uh. It, yeah, because you're depriving yourself of all these new things. So it lowers your no, standard of... No, not exactly not. It's, it's exactly. the hedonic treadmill is that you return to your baseline. Your, oh, my, my baseline is now basically sitting in front of a computer. That's that's what mm. it is. Yes, exactly. but I, but I'm the same. Journal. But but I get the same level of enjoyment doing that. Yeah, it's the over time of it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it, and you're depriving yourself rather than introducing new things to remain at the same level of happiness. You're taking away things and you're staying. But that at the just same makes it more happiness. exciting now to do my work. Sure, that's another way to look at it. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. So what's <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting, yeah. Graham. Okay, we well, I guess I'm trying to learn to, yeah. okay. what is it, work to live versus live to work type of thing? Have you guys heard that? Yeah, yeah. That? I've never heard of that, but yeah. it's smart. Where it's like, like, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I, I feel yeah. like if you have a job that you love, there's a combination, you know, there's a balance right. in there, especially when you hit that flow and you're in the zone, it's like such a good feeling. Right. But I think, yeah, learning to enjoy the little moments. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's, it's not good to work to live because it, then you have to do something just to live. I like the... <laughs> This sounds bad. Yeah. No, yeah, you want to build something but that you're excited to do. I like it's part of your living life. to work like, because then yeah. you, just, you have so much fun doing whatever you do. And agreed, like that, agreed. that becomes, and I don't we're, know. we're very lucky in that sense. Yes. We hit a cool spot that we yeah. enjoy, but how much do you usually work a day? Uh, I usually try to stick to like a 10 to seven schedule, but it always bleeds over. So like I'll, if I'm in New York, I'll get up, I go to my workout class. I sit down at my desk. I'm at my desk pretty much the whole day, unless I'm filming a video or shooting with my assistant, et cetera. Um, and I try really hard to like cut off at the end of the day, but I usually end up still like responding to comments yeah. and stuff like that. But I try to stick to that like Monday through Friday, mostly cause like my boyfriend, my close friends, they're all kind of on that s- schedule. Mm-hmm. And if I don't otherwise, I'll just work every day, you know, it's kind of hard to turn off. So mm-hmm. that's the structure I try to stick to. Cool. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for letting us confront you. We're almost at two hours. This is one of the longer podcasts wow. that we've done. So thank you so much. Thanks and uh, make sure to get your four free socks down below in the description and uh, check out my monkey pie M1 finance like, if you want to follow that. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll link to all your information down below in the description. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, pester her to uh, respond to <laughs> Jubilee and uh, uh, make some of that content. Get a van, travel. Yep. And uh, that's it. Happy Sunday. Well, no, I don't want to say happy Sunday because you could be watching this on another day. Happy day of the week. Happy, happy, day, of happy week. day of the week. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. All of our information is down below in the description. And uh, yeah, until next time. Until next time. Cool. How yeah. are you? What brokerage do you use or what, what are you going to be using? Well, right now I pretty much do everything through Vanguard. Vanguard's um, great. I love Vanguard. It's, it's easy to use. Everything's there. And I'll have to... <laughs> oh, oh no. no. What's wrong? <laughs> what do you have? Uh-oh. Oh no. Does she need the eye lick? <laughs> no. Uh-oh. I think she was she was biting her finger and I think she <laughs> got to it. She ate it. Yeah. Some dogs get so excited, like biting fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so like just lose. She can't contain herself. It's like, oh my. I know, no fingers. Oh. Sometimes it, it's bad because if you're like deep in focus yeah. or like in something and she does something. Yeah, you have like a great thought. Yeah, and, and she's not know, entirely distracted. potty trained either. So I took her out. Hopefully oh, oh, she peed. The, the other thing is you could hold her, but I'm she'll just go crazy. Yeah. All right, let's just try. All right. We <laughs> 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 so you spend right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Remember, $30,086. Okay, so 33 episode of the Oscar yeah. Iced Coffee Hour. hour. 33,000. Yeah. Okay, I might have to do two takes. I'm not a smooth YouTuber, right? Like, no, you're, you're good. No, we all do that. We all do that. Times, okay. So whenever. Go. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Which, any specific camera? <sighs> that, that one. That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hello, and welcome to the 33 episode of the Iced Coffee Hour. Oh, I- sorry, you got to say ever. Yeah. Ever. Go. Nice 33rd okay. ever episode of the Iced Coffee Hour. My name is Elena. Uh, so far, the podcast has made $30,086. dollars dollars All right, it. perfect. Hello, and welcome to the 33 episode ever of the Iced Coffee Hour. I'm 
Say messed it up. No, it's good. Thirty third ever. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Thirty third ever. Thirty three. Thirty third ever. Ever. Okay. Okay. Hi. I will, okay. <laughs> just. <laughs> I'll throw these in at the end if you're cool. Perfect. With it. Okay. Okay. Hi and welcome to the thirty three thirty third. <laughs> Guys, oh no. You could do it. You could do it. We believe in you. I'm getting a little puppy love. Okay. okay. Hello and welcome to the 33 episode ever. I'm Elena and this is the ice. Ever. <laughs> Wait, what did I say <laughs> wrong? What did I do? Yeah. 33. You know what? I got it. I got it. 30, did I say you, episode? You yeah. say 33. Ev- 33rd uh, ever. <laughs> episode ever. Oh, yeah, she's on the cord. Don't bring you it know up. Okay, wait, 33rd if you, ever. If you mess it up, it's okay. We'll just roll wait, you with say it. it. Wait, say it once. Hello and welcome to the 33rd ever episode of the Ice Coffee ever. Hour. My name is Jack. Okay. And so far as of today, or we made the podcast is made like, just, you don't have to be do it like verbatim. The only thing is ever is important. Okay. And <laughs> Why is this so hard? 33rd <laughs> yeah, ever, ever episode. episode. Um, Stay. Also 33rd, Stay. not 33. Yeah, why am I? It's okay if you Ugh. say 33. That part is not crucial. All right. Uh, and then just introduce yourself and say how okay. much the podcast is made. All okay. right, guys. Yeah. Feeling confident. Hello, and welcome to the 33rd ever episode of the Ice Coffee Hour. I'm Elena, and today, or as of today, the episode... The podcast. Oh, <laughs> as, really of today, the, uh, as of today, the podcast has made $33,000 dollars and eighty or thirty-three eighty. <laughs> good. Thirty thousand. So yeah, I promise. Should we just keep it? Thirty-three. Thirty-third ever episode. Why is thirty-third ever? It, we make three, it hard. Thirty thousand. We don't. Thirty thousand and eighty-six dollars. Yeah. Want to say okay. it again? Yes. Okay. Go. Thirty-three. 